so it's a very uh very good day to remember that we also have eternal spiritual bodies and we are these souls that also are in the process of this he gave the example now we had already many very nice uh meditations about it this whole week and thank you gurudev you gave so many inspirations into our hearts and i hope also we can have your darshan today again and tarun baba thank you also for being there helping us inspiring us all the time yes yes you do and all i don't know who is there i didn't check it yet but who is there i bow down to Udava. you and udava and all great souls please help us so we can make relish to gurudev and to swamini and all vaishnavas oh no it's gone <laughs> i just found a nice picture So, we also need uh, another body to serve properly. Please show again. Nicely. Nicely. Is this the moment he came out of the grave? There was two angels with him, Thank you. Thank you. guiding. You can see. Oh, yeah, more. <laughs> Very shiny, beautiful. Right. Wow. Right. Yeah. Jai Radhe. So and now today we are also listening from our dear Raghunath Goswami. By the mercy of all Vaishnavas, especially also Ananda Das Babaji Maharaj, meditating how we also can have our spiritual identities, realizations, and eternal bodies. We are reading verse twenty-three. Is all the translations is done? Yes. I think we only have Japanese translation and German translation, right? Yes. Radhe Radhe, Jai Nanda Maharaj, Dhanavas. Jai Gopinath, Jai. Sachibaya, Jai Gurudev. Yeah. O oh, beloved of the Prince of Vraj, when will this person, after washing your lotus feet, lovingly braid your hair with the beautiful fine garlands made by the florist girl Narmada? O oh, beloved of the Prince of Raj, when will this person, after washing your lotus feet, lovingly braid your hair <clears throat> with the beautiful fine garlands made by the florist girl Narmada? Notes In his Swarup Avesh, 
Sri Raghunath Das <coughs> has dried off. Sri Mati's limbs after her bath and dressed her. Then, when that vision leaves him, he cries and rolls on the bank of Sri Radhakund, saying, When will you fulfill the long standing? aspirations of this bretch of this fallen soul by giving me my desired service his heart melts for want of direct personal service Then again, humility dwells up in his heart and understanding his unworthiness, he begins to weep again. <clears throat> Still, he cannot give up hoping. When, his re when he remembers the compassion of his beloved deity, his heart is illuminated by the light of hope. This hope is the nectar that revives the sadhaka, who is suffering the pangs of separation. Later on in this purport also Baba is explaining what is this hope and I just love it how he is saying that hope is what keeps the practicing devotee alive. We see that uh, Raghunath Das Goswami is going through different feelings. On the one hand he is asking when will I get my service? And on the other hand, he feels oh, crying, feeling unworthy. So he is going between the different baths of his heart. But then again, when he understands the mercy of Srimati Radhika, he is again feeling hope and this hope keeps him alive. This keeps him going. So Baba is uh, quoting a verse of Stava Mala of Srila Rupa Goswami's prayers. And he says, O destroyer of Agasur, the greatest souls like Shukadev, Ambarish and others have hardly been able to worship you. And when I hear about that, my heart that is totally devoid of any devotion feels pain. And that is again that pain that my God, even Ambarish Maharaj, he was fasting the whole time. He was the exemplary devotee of Atmani Vedanam. And Shukadev, he was, you know, explaining the whole Bhagavatam to, to Parikshit Maharaj. They could they they were so much full of desire and devotion and and they could hardly worship you and where am i i feel pain because oh my god is there any hope but when i hear from the scriptures and the sages that the waves of your compassion are flowing towards everyone from Lord Brahma down to the sm smallest and meaningless creatures then the drops of nectarian hope 
cool off my heart and soothe it. Bah. That is this game of hope and pain. And Baba says, when the practicing devotee is immersed in remembrance of Shri Radha in Smaran Nishta, he feels as if he directly serves her and when he gives up that remembrance and returns to worldly thoughts, he feels as if he falls from heaven into a desert. Yeah, <clears throat> we can see Suniti in this way that the, even the one who, who write the Vedas, he, uh, he likes this direct connection and service. And we can see that the Vedas, actually, when we read the Vedas, they are speaking about the relationship between uh, some beings, demigods, human beings, different, different relationship to the beloved deity, to the God. Right? With Nishinga Dev and Pralad. No? And, and so on and so on. But this cannot be the, the goal to speak about the relationship. The goal should be a relationship that we create with the Lord or our Ishtadev. That is what we are looking for and that is also Vyasadev is looking for, this direct relationship. And uh, so in this case we understand that walk on the crown of the Vedas means to create actually like our own part of the Vedas. We also are able to enter one relationship to our Ishtadev, like described in the Vedas. But as long as we only describe these relationships of others, I say this is second-hand devotee. We have to enter in a direct relationship between us and our Ishtadev. And this is possible by the mercy of Gurudev, of his guidance. Then we, we write our own part of the Vedas. Maybe this part is not for everyone used, usable, but it is important to us that we write our small part of the Vedas as a relationship between us and our Goddess. I don't know, you understand this part, what I make. This is really personal. It is, uh, a dis description is one thing and it's very helpful to us so that their hope is there. If we read about the relationship here, about our Raghunathas and uh, Swamini, then that creates some hope in our heart that that will be also possible in our situation, that we can follow his footsteps. But at one point we will come to this place where he serves uh, our Swamini and then we can also see there is one more uh, Manjari, Narmada. 
So that, that means he is not alone there. She works together with Narmada. That means there is a team. And same as if we are there entering, we are also in a team with our Gurudev, Guru Manjari. This is so beautiful to understand this, what is the meaning on the top of the Vedas, right? When we create our own uh, chapter, we come and go in the relationship. Adi, Adi, this is very, very wonderful. Dhanavads to all of you. Jai Gurudev. So yeah, nice. Baba. So, so sweet. Um, I just wanted to add, um, you made two very, very wonderful points. First of all, mm, we, we want to uh, develop our own relationship. And you mentioned, you mentioned how, you know, and this, I feel it's very important. This morning I was reading uh, Brema Bhakti Chandrika, for the verse, Sri Guru Charana Padma Kevala Bhakti Satma Bandho Mui Savadhana Mate. And I was thinking that in the year, I, yeah, I felt that me, myself, personally, I didn't, yeah, I, I neglected a little bit Guru in the last years and last months. So uh, I read this again and again to read, to come into this, in this mood that actually, like you said right now, the service to Gurudev and the love for the lotus feet of Gurudev is, the, is really so important. And you said, you know, that we, cannot, we can listen to many descriptions of many perfected sadhakas or sitas and sadhakas, whatever, but we have to drive our own car, our own, we have to fly our own plane. And I was remembering that this is only possible by the Kripa of Sri Gurudev, that he is giving us, we can only develop this relationship, which is infused into our heart by Sri Gurudev, if we know our Stai Bhav. And this is the, the, this is the Alpha and the Omega. If we know our Stai Bhav, which is given and revealed by Sri Gurudev, then we can start, like you said, this own journey of our own real relationship with Swamini, so this is so important. I was reading, I encourage everyone to read this Baba's commentary on Sri Guru Charana Padma. This is such a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful commentary, which is strengthening and supporting our faith in Guru. It's two, three pages, but it's so full of uh, quotes from the Acharyas, how important it is, Guru Padashraya, you know, this first step this really first step into the umbrella of Sri Gurudev and to, to, to desire that he will reveal to us and and even if we know it already to strengthen our our stai bath that we cannot go out of this and every morning and every time when we remember this that we know we are manjaris of Swamini so this is what we are aspiring for to really make a big foundation of this stai bath Yes, very nice, Tarun Baba. And Baba is giving also a hint how we can uh, get this. Although, of course, we know everything is mercy. But Baba says here that the, the smarana nishta is important. The practicing devotee is immersed in remembering Sri Radhika. This immersion in remembering of Sri Radhika or immersion of remembering Sri Gurudev is giving this uh, aliveness, this living feelings in my bhajan. Then the tears can come and then, you know, all the feelings can come that will give this intensity. Because oh, this, Gurudev, yeah, yes, yeah. This, this immersion, this... This immersion, this immersion can only happen if we really, really hanker to know our our own Swarup. If we know it, we should go deep into it. And if we don't yet know it, we should really, really hanker for that revelation who we really are. Otherwise, the Chiva cannot immerse it. It's only on the platform of the soul where we can Im immerse ourselves in the Lila. But if we know ourselves, 
it's much easier to read the, these this Leela uh, verses and to go into it. Like, like Baba says, you know, when, when Raghunathas Goswami is saying to us sadakas, oh, he has hope. So he is only saying that to us, to, to teach us. He is, he is a perfected, he is a sitta. So he is only saying that to inspire us, that we should never give up the hope to, to like you said, Sunidi, this immersion can only take place if we know where we belong, if we know our parampara, if we know our Gurudev, our Guru Manjari, our setting, our seva, our dress, our age. So everyone should should make this the heart's desire number one to get this revelation from the lotus mouth of Gurudev. <laughs> May I also wow. add something? Kuku? Yep. Uh, yesterday we read verse 11 and Goranga worked out and, and here Maybe again. you speak a little bit louder. To, uh, so, Davy, it's a little bit yes. hello, hello. quiet. Hello, hello. Yeah, it's just your voice. Just my voice. It's okay. So, yesterday um, we read in the Croatian class uh, verse 11. And Garanga worked out, and here we, we here is the same aspect that by this greed, our heart is melting. And by melting the heart, our humility increase. And this is an ongoing process, melting the heart and humility. And then hope grows. But at first, with this greed, our heart is melting. Oh, yeah, that's very good. Very good point. Very uh, That point is also done here by Baba more and more it's, it's explained how this hope as a first greed and melting the heart and then uh, the humility or the prema will grow and uh, but he also mentioned this uh, smara nishta this firm faith in what we are doing actually when we are remembering when we are practicing you know to feel myself as a Darcy and hearing and this that this is also it is the process it is uh, valuable it is doing the the uh, job so to say it will do the job and i have to have a firm faith in it and not lose it when the result is not coming instantly <laughs> thank you <laughs> <laughs> one more thing we ought to read this week i don't know it was the russian class maybe with this pollen mm. You remember? No, this was uh, actually, yeah, the Russian class. It was yesterday. Because yesterday yes. also? Yes. <laughs> and um, I, today I, I had a, a one man with, with his bees. He come in our garden and put some uh, bees in the garden. And again, I remember this pollen. What is the meaning of pollen? So we read this verse that Swamini put her lotus feet on the head of uh, Raghunath or Rati Manjari and it is described as pollen and to understand this verse nicely we have to understand what the meaning of pollen is this is uh, uh, not only the it is the mercy of, of Radhika we absolutely need in the in the flower maybe for example a cherry tree there are two parts in the flower there is a male and a female part and to growing the fruit they need the connection the, the female part need this pollen from the male part from another uh, 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 flower, cherry flower. So, blossom, yeah, cherry blossom. Cherry blossom. This is the only way to grow a fruit without this touch of the beast legs. They are full of these pollens when they fly from flower to flower. Only then the fruit is coming. So 
we can understand what is the meaning behind this verse. The manjari need this mercy of Swamini to grow from the flower to the ripe fruit, sweet. And this is very beautiful and it's a deep meaning and we have to understand what is the meaning of a pollen to understand this verse, actually, right? It is otherwise the, the flower will not uh, uh, become the fruit. And so the manjari to become ripe and maybe a new tree is coming like we learned from Chaitanya. He, is, is, he gives the example of a tree. And Manjari is, a, is uh, the name of Manjari and Kinkari. It's a, it's a flower. No, so, so this is a very deep meaning. We can enter in this meditation about this. What is the meaning of the pollen? coming from the lotus feet of our Swamini to our head. We are flowers and we need this her pollen on our head to become ripe, a fruit. It's so beautiful and this is what we say, hope, fixed face and the mercy. It's so beautiful. These verses are all I would like also to thank Sudevi. This was a very wonderful point you were making. Um, hope and eagerness is very, very closely related. Because if you are not eager, you have no hope. You know, eagerness brings about this hope. And reading the voice, the, 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 the words of the Mahachans brings us hope. So these are very, very closely related. And also, if you don't if we are, I can speak for myself. If I am not humble, I am not eager, and then there is no hope. So you mean that all three, this is so nice, all three are connected, eagerness, hope, and humility. If you are not humble, you will not be eager, because then you are in Purusha mentality and you can never enter into Loba. So do you have, we have to become humble, and we have to become eager, and then there is hope. If there is one, one cut, in this triangle, we cannot advance in spiritual life. So primarily, I can speak for myself and many others will realize this. Humility is the first one because without humility, this is the, the, the central verse of Mahaprabhu, Trinata Pisu Nichena, Tarori Vasa Hishnuna, Amanina Mana Dena, Kirtanya Sadahari. Without humility, there can never be any Lopa. So this is the work we have to do every day, like a stonemason is doing, you know, the work to make an elephant out of a stone. We have to, we have to do this every day, the humility and then the eagerness comes. And if I am not, I can see, if I am not humble, I am not eager. So everything, I don't care, you know, then you are not, you are not in the right frame of consciousness. So these three things, so therefore I'm thankful for, for Sudevi. This is such a nice point, humility, eagerness and hope is very closely related. Yes, if I may, I read on. It's the subject that continues now. Hope is what keeps that practicing devotee alive. He cannot do bhajan when he feels, I am not going to get it. That's the eagerness, right? But the hope for attainment makes a seat for himself in the heart of the devotee. So that was inspiring this morning. I heard also, I was so lucky to hear uh, Sachinandan Bhaiya uh, sharing on Srimad Bhagavatam. And I want to share it with all of you because it was so beautiful that one point about the hope that gave me a lot of hope is when he said Shrimati Radhika is very eager when it comes to the point that one devotee is trying to reach her, one Dasi 
And when she is, you know, she has somehow noticed her endeavors, then she will keep her arms around the neck and not let that person go. <laughs> because remember Satinandan Baya, you said that this morning, a few hours ago, that this is, uh, uh, in that regard, Sri Radhika is very selfish, you said, that she will not let go. If one devotee wants to reach her, she will also hold this devotee. Yeah, maybe you can, it was so beautiful, it gave me so much hope. Even when someone is thinking to go somewhere else, doesn't like, that she wants this type of, uh, this mood type of devotee near to her always. It's, it's, it's not only our they are also pleased actually. Radharani also get pleasure. That's why she enjoys and she feels very nice. And that's why she needs this type of devotees around her. And once someone comes with full of heart, honestly, she, de she never let go him or her. Mm. She never. The same thing with uh, means both are same, same, same with them. This came in the morning in my mind that it happens like this. Then why they are they no need the aptakam? It is said in the Sanskrit they aptakam atmaram. They no need to do all these things, but they do. Why? Because they love. Their core means centralization of their. Um, Existence is uh, based on love. They love devotee. They love their people a lot, more than we think. We try, but really from the beginning, they love Jiva all the time. We are separated, we come and then we practice. This is different. But they, from life to life, they are, they, they are in love with us. They never that they don't him, they love her. They, it's not like that. They're continuously loving. But Jiva Sabhav, the nature of Jiva sometimes mistakes and then again come on this uh, uh, mortal place all the time. Little mistake. It is like uh, <clears throat> going on the mountain height and your little mistake will make you fall down and then again you have to start from zero. It's like this. So it happened happening. But once they, they don't leave them, they know. When they, when the devotees are marked, many times Guru said, when they are marked, mm -hmm. they are not nowhere, no separate. They are always there. So need to be marked actually. They are all uh, trying to be marked with uh, Srimati Radhika. That's Beautiful. <laughs> not much because I don't. Wonderful. Know. Very wonderful. Very very wonderful. Radhe Radhe. Jai Udavji. Jai Ho, everybody. Radhe. I'm uh, Radhe. I'm um, like so often happens with me. I get many questions about the words, and these words, uh, humility and worthiness, and hope and eagerness. I find them difficult, maybe others they're clear, but for me they're difficult because they're ego words, all of them. Humility in usual use is uh, I'm nobody compared to some external measurement. Worthiness, I'm not worthy because of some external measurement. And what uh, what I feel like we need to understand in this in the con in this context is that for example humility cannot mean i am not nothing i uh, sorry humility cannot mean i am nothing it must mean i am not measured 
by anything outside me. I am, I understand that everything I am is from God. Exactly. So it's more of a realization of where my value, my worthiness comes from, and not sort of a measure of somebody external imposing uh, on me. And exactly. by the same, oh, thank you, Baba. And, and by the same, in the same way, doesn't hope mean I hope that my hope will disappear because I will be? And eagerness means I hope my eagerness will disappear because then I will be with God. I will be God. That God will appear in my myself, my ego will disappear. So that hope shouldn't be the hope to get some gift that comes. from outside, but to become the divine from inside, become the manjari that I am internally. That's what I that's what hope has to mean. It can't be this material hope. And uh, I guess it's so easy for us to associate that with material hope that's external. So and nice, Sudhava. This was also the point I saw in this. Uh, when we we can try to be, uh, 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 humility, humble. Humble. We can try to be humble, but this is a uh, uh, this we have to try because we are not. For this, we have to try to be to be. It's not our nature as long as we are identified with this material body and with the material ego. This point I, you made. I and completely uh, understand. Yeah. For this, uh, we need to come to the point of the soul level. In that moment, we reach the soul level. We leave this false ego. But this is not enough. This is Gurudev's teaching. We have to come from that soul level to our real self. And this is, in our case, it's a manjari. And then this humility become our nature. Right? It's our it is our nature. So that we know uh, from that moment on, we, we don't need to try to be humble. This is our nature. And if we are really the manjaris of Swamini. Actually, we are her servants. So what is the meaning? We are the servants of love, of the sons of love. So who can be in his nature more humble than one who is serving the love? Then it's our nature. We not have to try to be humble. It, we are. I I completely understand, Udafji, your your predicament because this humility has nothing to do with the earthly, mundane humility that we are worthless, that we are the last, the last person, the worst person, blah blah blah. No, 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 no. But I want to say also something else. Um, first of all, humility in Gaudiya Vaishnavism, humility means only one thing: you let go of the reins. You are not the doer, and you know that you are an instrument. So this is real humility. And this is very, very worthy because the mantras, you can see the mantras, many times it's written mantras, mantras have pride. So how can this go together that mantras are pride and but we need to be humble. So that is very easy to resolve because first of all, humility means you know that you are not the doer and you are always in anukatya of those who are teaching you, like Guru Manjari, like your sisters and brothers. It has nothing to do with being in the in the mundane world, yet you are worthless. You are nothing. Because then comes the point, Manjaris are so important to Swamini, and they know that. That is their whole worthiness, to be an instrument in the divine couple's lila. So their part... Their playing part in this Leela is so worthy and they know that, but they know that they are not doing this for themselves. You know, they have the less ego of all. Ma Prabhupada Saraswati is writing in Rindavan, Maham Rindavan Mahimamrita. They have so less ego, they don't even want to enjoy with the Lord. They do everything for Swamini. So this is their real glory and that this is their pride. We cannot compare 
these terms in the mundane stuff. Pride in the mundane world is you are pride of your achievements. But pride in the spiritual world is to be an instrument that something can be achieved. It is a very big difference. You know, when you in, in, in the mundane world, the businessman, he wants to make a million. But the manjaris, they, they are the instrument that this million is made. Not that they make this million. You know what I mean? So they are the instrument of this lila. And also you have to remember um, the eagerness. I understand what you mean. But honestly speaking, the eagerness and the, and the, and the loba will never disappear. This we have to be very conscious because we can read many, many times that the manjaris, the eagerness of the manjaris, it will never be like, like, like Brahmin. Like now we are satisfied and everything is finished, all is one and everything is one and we are peaceful. It will never be the case. The manjaris, even if we achieve city, even if we achieve perfection, the eagerness will never go away. Gurudev may also please say something to this. The eagerness will never go away. The manjaris will always have the feeling that I, they are not doing enough. And in that is the bliss. In, in, the, in the material world, you get frustrated because you never come to a point where everything is perfect. But in the spiritual world, the manjaris are always doing this, that they are always eager. There is, no, there is no meaning of, okay, now I sit down and rest. It's not there. So this eagerness will never leave. So don't think that, okay, when I realize myself, the eagerness is gone. No, no then the real eagerness will start. So these are, I think, essential differences between these two spheres in the material world and in the spiritual world. So loba is a spiritual thing. It will never, never go away. And this is nice. You see, Raghunath Goswami is always praying for direct darshan of Swamini. You know, he has it, but he's still praying for it. This is for our mind. We cannot understand this. Our mind is conditioned by time and place and chronological. You know, we go from A to B to C and time runs, but in the spiritual world, there is no time. There is eternal presence. So our eagerness in the heart of the manjaris, it will never go away. Shri Jai Ho! Gurudev, can I say something <laughs> to, to, to tickle you also a bit? Um, Thank you so much. There's, uh, I think, such important uh, concepts for us um, bhaktas who are trying to practice this path. I was just feeling when I was listening now to, to Udavaji's question and, um, and the beautiful response of uh, Gora Sundar and Darun, I felt that the, the key word here is mercy. Once we understand the concept of mercy, then this words of this humility <coughs> this makes totally sense because we understand that this is really only the path of mercy that this is working in us you know there's not my own input it's like i'm receiving as uh, darun said look i don't i'm not the doer anymore it happens to me and then real humility comes you know the more bhajan the more prema the more bhakti the more humility comes because the more the understanding comes no gurudev that this is the path of mercy only. This is the path of my Guru Dev, my Guru Parampara who's giving me this. So it's actually from inside to outside, right, Guru Dev? From Antaranga to Bhairanga, this happens. First, the inside revelation comes. Then externally, I will also have the symptoms of humility, of endeavor, of greed. But actually, it will happen first inside through the path of mercy. And this gives greed more in our life. Greedy. Mercy when comes, um, humility comes, and that is a greed. More and more to receive that mercy. Mercy to receive, right? When receiving, then we want to not to, only to be a sadhaka. We don't want to be even the perfect Siddha Purusha Gyama Sadhaka. 
because they want to we always in the mercy of that real teacher they want to be only student to learn with his teacher that is mercy receiving way mm. that way what happen automatic humility comes and greed comes so siddha you watch go to the siddha guru they will say i am i am learning i don't know anything go to a high saintly person they will say they will never say that they are siddha but the person who took the shelter they realize it because they receive mercy from them May I may I just say one thing to Udhava? Sorry. So Nidhi, is it okay if I say just one more thing for Udhava? Yeah, you um, don't have to ask me. Um, yeah, um, Udhava ji, um, you see, to boggle your mind a little bit more, you you see that everyone is looking for humility, and the Mancharis are the utmost expression of humility. But let me. give you an example how to how our mind cannot really understand this first of all they are the perfect kingaris are perfectly humble but they are in the position when krishna is coming to them and asking to to be with swamini they are not humble at all they immediately can say no you cannot enter so how can we how can we you know to do this together first of all they are humility personified but on the other hand they can say no you cannot enter this kuncha to krishna to the supreme personality of godhead and the only reason which combines those two things is for, is only one thing everything they do they do for swamini you know so this is the only they, they are not bright and they are not you know in the mundane world humility means oh i can do anything i am so shy i can do sh- i can do anything i'm worthless I'm, but this sorry. is not the, this is not the spiritual humility the mantras can clearly say to the supreme per- personality of god it you are not allowed here to enter imagine that and they only do this because they perfectly know i am an instrument of swamini um, <coughs> thank you thank you uh, well, i would like no, to add something also because may i because this um webster says that humble means lacking all signs of pride aggressiveness or self assertiveness so it is not only this catholic understanding of being no nothing it's perhaps i do have to have a a, a source that i can understand that my pride i can give up my pride i can give up my aggressiveness i give up my self assertiveness well yes i think the what i learned from this exchange is that humility is not the matter of reducing pride to zero it's a matter of realizing that i belong to someone else to something else yes and i have to say uh, tarun bhai that that to uh, uh, how grateful i am that you boggle my mind because the moment i start saying i've got it all understood then i'm a lost soul <laughs> gurudev mm-hmm. Tara, uh, could I add something to what you just said about this pride of the Dasi? Why you ask me, man? You are my superior. No, 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 no. You're my inspiration. My whole life. Without you, where would I be today? Um, there is this beautiful uh, verse in Chaitanya Charitamrita: "Radhika Dasi yadi hoya man, sikre mile Gokula Khan." when i have this pride to be a dasi radhamani then i will attain also gokul khana but it doesn't mean that i will attain him i will face him 
And I can actually tell him, as you said, Tarun Baba, as a Dasi, I can really tell more now you cannot come here or now step to the side. You are not capable of doing this seva. So that means that facing the Supreme without any awe and reverence happens when we are totally loyal to our Swamini, when we have this pride. And this is what you just said, and I just felt this verse actually really also kind of nails it. You're beautiful. This is what we need to develop, no? And, one, and you know, you know, Sudevi, Sudevi was, was giving a very, very good point. She was saying self-assertiveness. So this is the whole thing. This Webster dictionary, whatever. So this is the whole thing. Self-assertiveness. Humility stands and falls. Self-assertiveness means we, like Gurudev is always saying, we have to know our real self. And if we know our real self, then we can be genuinely humble. Everything else but the spiritual self is self-assertiveness. And this is this is the wrong humility. Oh, let's change the word. It's not self-assertiveness, it's soul assertiveness. <clears throat> what you want to say? Yeah. Yes, what if you wanted to say? That uh, this Radha Dasi Hoya this word is explanation like this. Dasi Abhiman. Dasi Abhiman makes in Sarupavas. And when this Abhiman is growing, that is the mercy. It should grow. Radha Dasi Hoya Abhiman. Or 24 7, we have to think and live in that feeling. Then, soft ego cannot come there. Mercy flow there. That's only one thing to understand. Yeah. Radha Dasi Hoya Vimaan. Radha Dasi Hoya Vimaan. Nothing can come there. Thank you. So the soul, the soul is not the soul and then decides to be a servant. It's the nature of the soul to serve, to be dasi. Which is why the same thing is saying that the soul is made of love. It's not that the soul exists and then maybe it's a good idea to love and serve. No, the, sir, the soul is already giving. Mm. Yeah. There is this verse, Nityaya Krishna Das, the, the, uh, the quality of the soul is to be part and parcel of the Supreme Soul and always in the function of a servant. So Gurudev, so wonderful. Thank you. This word, Abhiman, Abhiman is such a deep, deep word, you know. What means Abhiman? Abhiman means identification. And as soon as we identify with the spiritual body, that is the whole point. This Abhiman must be kinkari Abhiman, like Gurudev just wonderfully said. Abhiman is that what the Webster di the Dictionary says, the self, self-assertiveness is our kinkari, is our manjari swarup. That is the real assertiveness and that is the real Abhiman. Thank you all. If you don't mind, I will continue reading. Hope is what keeps that practicing devotee alive. He cannot do bhajan when he feels I'm not going to get it. Hope for attainment makes a seat in the heart of the devotee. Uddhavadas hopes to see the Yugalaki shore with their sakis. And just by the way, I was thinking also that this hope is Srimati Radhika. She is hope. She is hope for Mohan, right? So she is also our hope. <laughs> she is the hope of hope. <laughs> so 
Uh, feeling this, I love this sentence. The hope for attainment makes a seat for herself, in this case, in the heart of the devotee. So when she had Bhati Radhika makes a seat in the heart of our, you know, in our hearts, then there will always be hope because she has taken over. When meditation becomes very deep, visions start coming. Although Goswamis are eternal associates of the Lord, they still relish the flavors of sadhana, calling out and lamenting, Ha Swamini, be merciful to me and take me into the kingdom of devotional service. This is what you mentioned, Gurudev, no? that the self-realized souls, they always, they always pray for the mercy and they, they never say, ask me, I know it all. <laughs> they say, be merciful and take me into the kingdom of devotional service. Then Raghunath's mind and heart return to the kingdom of transcendental pastimes as he gets a vision of his next service. In his spiritual identity as Tulasi Manjari, Sri Raghunath takes Swamini into the dressing room and washes her lotus feet again before she starts drying Swamini's wet hair by squeezing it in a white cloth and perfuming it with fragrant Aguru incense. How expert she is in that service. Upasana means staying close by. Srila Naratam Das Thakur sings Radha Krishna Sevo Mui Jivane Marane Tarastane Tara Lila Dekoratri Dine Yestane ye lila kore, yuga la kisho, sakira sangini hoya, tai hao boda. I serve Radha and Krishna in life or in death, and I look at their playgrounds and their pastimes day and night. Wherever the adolescent young couple performs their pastimes, I will be as a companion of the Sakis. When a devotee is fully absorbed in Smaran, it is as if he directly serves the divine couple. Smaran means mental association, inner association. A Brahmana from Pratishtamapura burned his finger after sticking it in an offering of hot sweet rice, kshir, which he had just cooked in his meditation. Srila Raghunath Das Goswami got physically diagnosed in digestion from overeating in his meditation. Sri Krishna Das Babaji from Govardhan broke a bottle of oil in his meditation and all the people that lived at Manasi Ganga could actually smell it. 
and the body and clothes of Srila Madhusudam Das Babaji of Soyakund were covered with colored powder after he had mentally played holy with Radha and Moha. These examples show the miraculous transcendental power of devotion. If devotion is false, then what is real? Devotion is a portion of the Lord's innate energy, Swarup Shakti. Just as devotees have spiritual Radhe. discussions with each other. Radhe, Radhe. Yes, Guruji. Read this line again. Yes. Devotion. Devotion is a portion of the Lord's innate energy, Swarup Shakti. <laughs> Lord energy, Swarup Shakti. <coughs> Devotion is Lord Energy Sarup Shakti. Explain this. Yeah, on this point. Yes. So devotion is Shimati Radhika herself. Krishna is actually giving devotion, right? We have heard this before. When he sees that the soul is coming close and want to come in his service, then he gives buddhi yogam tam. He gives the intelligence how to come to him. And that means, actually, now Krishna is saying, Srimati Radhika, she is her, yours. <laughs> she is getting now... The soul gets now, when she has realized that she is a feminine, she gets the possibility to serve and learn in the Swarup Shakti, in the guidance of Srimati Radhika. And that's, uh, so that's why even also when Krishna is seeing that the soul wants to go, you know, back to their spiritual identity or their, you know, service attitude, he will give them to Srimati Radhika's care. Right, Arun Baba? Yes, very wonderful. Wonderful. The Chiva is the Chiva is Tatasta Shakti and the Bhakti. Bhakti comes only from the Lotus Feet of Swamini. Bhakti is a combination of Samvit, knowledge, and Ladini uh, bliss. So this combination of Ladini Shakti and Sambit Shakti makes Bhakti. So we know that Ladini Shakti is the primary force of everything. So Ladini Shakti is the primary force in Bhakti also, because without Ladini Shakti, we only have Sambit. And Sambit means only I know. I know. So this is Aham Brahmasmi, you know. And I know this, but without Ladini Shakti, there is no exchange, no relationship, and no happiness and no bliss. So for a devotee, for a sadhaka of Manjari Path, um, Ladini Shakti means exchange. We have to have an exchange with Swamini and with Krishna. Otherwise, it is not it is not Bhakti. And here Baba is making the point that Bhakti as innate, an innate energy from the Lord, Swarupa Shakti, he means that this, this energy is coming into the heart of the Jiva by the Bhakti Lada Beach given by Gurudev. So here this is very important. There's nothing which we can gain with our own efforts. It only comes by the mercy of someone who has this Bhakti in his own heart and can give it to us. So this is very important also to see this. And Ladini Shakti is the primary, the primary power in this Bhakti because without happiness, without making Swamini and Krishna happy, there is no bhakti. He is giving our sarupa to be a devotion through Gurudev. 
तो स्वरूप शक्ति या लादनी शक्ति इन शी नोस विदाउट योर स्वरूप यू कैनोट डू डिवोशन Till the sarup sakti is not grown, devotion is external. Devotion moves from sarup to sarup sakti. Chaiyo. Wonderful, Gurudev. Yes. This is the same with humbleness, good. Therefore, I can feel that we cannot create humbleness, or uh, we cannot create to be uh, devoted. It is a it is a gift, is given yeah. by Gurudev and Swamini. Prabhupada also mentioned in Bhagavad Gita ten ten. This is the final goal of our life. It takes time. It takes time. Slow to realize it and live in the mercy. That takes time. And without sarup sakti, is no bhakti. No. And that bhakti is coming by mercy grace. That is mercy. Mm. That is come in our life. Ma, that is already the mercy. It's not my doing, Guruji. But is it not? <coughs> Sorry. Yes, Udavji. Ah, thank you. Is it not the? Um, what does it mean when Guru Dev says it's a realization? This means, in my ears, that we're all we're all all jivas are bhaktas in waiting. We're all potential bhaktas, and mercy means not getting. Devotion from outside, but uncovering it in our own hearts, taking away the blockages, taking away the material coverings. This is what the mercy means. So I think that this devotion, to answer the Guru Dev's first question, devotion is love, and love is like uh, Tarun Baba said, shakti. But this energy is fundamental. It's the energy that opens our eyes. It's the energy that makes our heart beat. It's the energy that makes our cells grow in our body. And only, but the higher level of energy of loving devotion towards God, this is for most people covered and needs mercy to be uncovered. But it's there in us. I think everyone in the world is a bhakta. <laughs> everyone. Oh, and only some of us are so so fortunate to have realized it. Now, Udavji, you have come to remind everyone. I remind you hereby. Yes. <laughs> Good evening. Very is, uh, happy with that. <laughs> sleeping, he, he says sleeping, and because of this, he say Jeev Jago. <laughs> <laughs> Can I say a little bit? Jaya Dada Maharaji, finally you give us your mercy. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> you inspire me. So, Guru Dev is saying ten ten of Bhagavad Gita. One should know that goal is Krishna, and when the goal is assigned, then the path is slowly but progressively traversed, and. The ultimate goal is achieved. So actually, Jiva is Tatasa Shakti, and uh, we our conditioned soul is taking shelter of Maya, material energy. But to know Krishna is first thing. To know soul and relationship is the first thing. But without taking shelter of Radharani, 
internalized potency, Swarpa Shakti, we cannot attain real bhakti. Uddhamaji said, we cannot attain real love. So this is, 1010 is very interesting. We have to finally take shelter of our Swamini, Shurimate Radharani. Take shelter internal potency. That's Bhagavad Gita said, that is natural uh, position of our jiva. You see, natural position. Humility become na our nature. Our natural Uddhava, our natural position is humility. But as long as we are sleeping, we are not <laughs> humble. <laughs> but in that moment, we awaken our self, our real being. It becomes our nature, like Jayananda said, right? It's, na it's our natural position, Gurudev many times said. Yeah, very nice. Our, inside our real nature, behind all coverings, we are totally humble. We are full of love and we are eternal. Jai Ho. This Sorry, Jai Nandaji. This is what I, Sudeep is saying before as well. Yeah. He yeah. became so enthusiastic, he could not Sorry. hold himself. Yes. <laughs> so Prabhupada said he attained his normal condition in the wow. pleasure in potency. Wow. That day was always stressing. <laughs> rather, rather. <laughs> Normal position. In the pleasure giving potency. Pleasure giving potency. Wow. Gurudev, I, I'm still puzzled. Uh, you were saying that real devotion only comes when I live in my sarup and otherwise it's only external. So why I'm practicing then all these years? Like why I'm practicing devotional life? If you can talk, please help me. Help us. Not long, shortcut. Many things to say. <laughs> uh, one is tattva vichar, one is a rasa vichar. To make rasgulla, there is a philosophy. Yeah. There is a rule to I make that milk. You have to take this much sugar, sugar and this <laughs> that is a tattva vicha. Yeah. And rasa vicha, take the rasgulla and keep wow. in mouth <laughs> and keep in mouth. And <laughs> then ask, how is this? He said, mm, mm. <laughs> <laughs> he, will, he will not say anything, and he will first eat. Say, Wonderful! I cannot explain this. You have to eat and test it. I was just going to say it. We are so lucky you always have a yeah. rasagula in your mouth, Gurudev. <laughs> yeah. Jai Ho. Yeah, this comes also now in the text. And I, 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 I tell you, it's amazing. Just as, a de as devotees, have spiritual discussions with each other, Ishta Goshti, like we are having now, Ishta Goshti, spiritual discussions. Similarly, the Sadaraka should also awaken his desire to have Ishta Goshtis with the Sakis and Manjaris. Tako tadera sate boso tadera kache mahatera vanira shakti ache. Stay with them, sit with them, for the words of the great devotees have great power. The scriptures and the great saints say, yes, good, I'm sorry. Sitting. We are listening now, sharing. This is Tattva Vichar. 
So how we can go into the Rasa Gula here on Zoom, Gurudev? <laughs> dripping, mouth dripping. Somebody give in your mouth is more tasteful. Wow. <laughs> yeah. The power is this dripping when Rasul take it in. <laughs> if you don't ask, he will give you. Wow. wow. And force me yeah, by force giving him the <laughs> Yes, we, we hope, Gurudev, one of these days when there's these millions of questions and millions of things, before I can say something, you will just put a rasagulla here. Ah! <laughs> There's nothing to ask anymore. <laughs> and that is the point, Gurudev, what you always say to us. The scriptures and the great saints, they say, that when the devotee's devotion ripens, he can see his beloved deity in all the moving and non-moving creatures. This is, the, this is the point we need. It. This much, this is much. What is not happening, it is start happening. This is much. Before I cannot see inside you that you are living or not. Mm. But now what you do, I don't know. That in the living and non-living entity, I start looking to you. Oh. That's the point. Now they are telling a Poland story, then I think this is all Radha Krishna Leela there. When uh, Gora Sundara is talking on that Poland, I say, wow, Radha Krishna is playing here also. Did they quote it to Where I see everywhere Priya Pritam Bila is happening. Mm. This is Kirpa of Istri. Kripa this, this is the navigation of Gurudev that it opened my Chakshudan Deloje, my divine eyes. He said, Dibbhijan Hide Prakashita. I can see you and I can see not only in you, I can see everywhere to you. In every talks I see you, every word is for you. Every behavior is for you. Every place I see you. Vishambharai, everywhere, in any molecules and part and partial, I can see every place to you. I don't know what my, my is a badness or what, I don't know, but it's happening. What to do? Radhe Radhe Gurudev, Jai Ho. There are so many things I cannot digest that. <laughs> Everyone brings so beautiful thoughts. I want to stay with one of them <laughs> and meditate, but then someone else again brings something nice. So it's really difficult to digest this high kata, but I'm very grateful that Gurudev mentioned just now again the pollen. And actually, already yesterday in the lecture when we spoke about this pollen, it came to me, and then Gorasunda again, he spoke about that. And I was thinking that the pollen actually is the cling in the Diksha Mantra. Whoa. Like cling the pollen on my head. <laughs> cling the pollen on my head. <laughs> Everything is there. So true. That was just what came to my mind, and I only shortly wanted to share. Wow. Yeah. Randra, now the pollen also became the shrink. <laughs> 
Also that, yes. Where this cling is coming from? Who is giving this cling? Gurudev is giving this cling. Jai he Gurudev. is the mercy. He is, he is giving this pollen. So beautiful. And with this cling, our flower can start become a ripe fruit. It takes time. Not come immediately. Like it takes one year, half year from the moment the bee gives the pollen to the flower, then the ripe fruit comes in autumn. So it is the same with us. We get good at this cling. It's so beautiful, Gorachana. Thank wow. you. Thank you so much. Wow. And the bee is going to the flower to shake the pollen. It's not going to the bud, to the manjari. But <laughs> from the flower, the pollen also, by shaking, <laughs> coming to me. Jai Ho, Jai Gurudev, Arigato Goswami. How deep we can go with, with a small part of a verse, right? You describe everything very deep, my dear. When you start oh talking God. about this, this was very deep, everything. Oh. Today. Gurudev many times speak about to listen. And... Uh, I think that it's very important to, to listen properly to this, this holy verses. So, that we can go deep inside. The pure devotees see only Sri Krishna or Sri Radha Mohan when yes, he looks at. Yes? Pure devotee. Is these words are every time is a fresh and new. I surprise I never listened before. When I listen again and again, I see that I never listen. It's from where it's coming. <laughs> and so many times I listen these words, but every time is new. Mm. It is surprising. These are the golden words. Mm. Every time, how many times you will repeat new feelings and new realization will come. So many, any other book like this. Temple of Love. <laughs> <laughs> but this is your realization, school, Dave. <laughs> These are already the pollen. <laughs> yes. No, no, this cannot. I can use use uh, collect from others. And <laughs> Change it. So no, need no, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> I don't believe when I listen. That. <laughs> so my through the while you were traveling this twenty years, you were spreading the pollen, but it takes time, as Dora said. <laughs> it took time for us to catch it, but the fragrance already gave. Yes. And we know that you like the cherries, Gurudev. We want to become big cherries that you can offer to Swamini. I don't know. I'm still, I know nothing. No, I see this. I have, I have to learn many things. I'm not talking because I'm learning again from all of you. It's surprising. It's increased my feelings by listening.
They are, and I only hope that you interrupt us all the time. Now I can feel that if you are with us, Guru Dev, and we are together, then a miracle starts and Swamini comes in the center. In that time we speak about this. She is here and because of this we are so much inspired. Because she is in our heart, we give space to her in this. So this is the beauty of, of this Sangha. So the pure devotee sees only Sri Radha Mohan when he looks at the moving and non-moving entities. He sees the moving and non-moving beings, but he does not see their forms. Everywhere he perceives his beloved deity. I want to share one very recent example of this. This was so sweet. We were sitting in Gur with you, Gurudev, in your room. And I'm sorry it was me, but one devotee said, Oh, Suniti, you have such a nice earrings matching your dress or something like that. And then Gurudev, you look and you said, Whatever she is wearing is not that the earrings will make the dress beautiful, but she makes them beautiful. So... You saw Radhika and you give this immediate, you know, that all the ornaments that she she is uh, wearing, she gives the beauty to the ornaments. So that was the perfect example again. And you again, you remind me of Shrimati Radhika that everywhere you look, everything you hear, every person that comes in your room, you, you are seeing a Dasi and you're feeling as a Dasi of Shrimati Radhika. Sorry for this, Gurudev. I know you don't like it so much, but it was very sweet. He who sees only his worshipable Lord in all the living entities, and who sees all the living entities in his worshipable Lord, is the greatest devotee. And devotion makes the Lord perceivable through all the devotee's senses. This is the greatness of devotion. So again, we, if we remember who is devotion, it's Shrimati Radhika, it's the Swarup Shakti. She is actually the one <clears throat> that make that open our vision, Gurudev, and that comes, you know, through all the channels of the devotees of the Vaishnavas, of Guru, of Guru Parampara, and that's all her doing because she is the origin of all Guru Tattva. I would like to say something to Gop well, Gopinath, Gopinath said. This was a nice, nice, you know, Gopinath wanted to bring out Gurudev's nectar. Um, <clears throat> Gopinath's question, why I am doing this then, this external external bhakti, external bhajan. But um, <clears throat> I want to say, Gopinath, that many, many times people have been asking me and every one of us, what is the use of your Siddha Pranali? You know, what is the use? You have not realized it. What is the use? <clears throat> so the use is very big because externally it's seen that we start with sadhana bhakti and then bhava bhakti and then prema bhakti. So my response is always the same, and this is so encouraging and hopeful. Without knowing the Swarup, without knowing who we really are, there is no question from coming from Sadhana Bhakti to Bhava Bhakti. Without Siddha Pranali, this is not possible. So even to know the information we have been given by Gurudev, you know, the Ekadash Bhav, the name, the form, the Seva. And even if we have not realized it now, like Gurudev said, it will take time. But this little detail, this Abhiman, this possibility to identify ourselves 
With this Svarub, is like Gurudev said, a shortcut for those who don't know this. It's not possible to come from Sadhana Bhakti to Bhava Bhakti because to come to Bhava Bhakti, we have to know our path. How else we can come from Sadhana Bhakti to Bhava Bhakti? What to speak of Prema Bhakti? So without knowing ourselves, our true Svarup, there is no way of coming to Bhava Bhakti. It's no way. So this gives so much hope and even takes one life or two lives this gives hope. We have now the identity card for entering, like Yukal Kishore always said. We have now been giving the visa for the spiritual world. We have now the entrance card to go into the spiritual world. And it's up to us to use this card and to endeavor for this card. But this is giving so much hope. It's a very big difference to do bhakti uh, with this card than without this card. Thank you. I think this was so wonderful now. And immediately the scene came to, comes to my mind that Gurudev gives us the rasgulla in the hand. <laughs> and what we do, we start looking at it, you know. Yeah. I look at color. Yeah. I look at the consistency. Oh, what is called, inside? What is what inside? Is inside? I start thinking, oh, then I put it in a donut and I Is put it, it in good the for fridge. me? Is it good for I, me? Yeah. I put it in the fridge. You know, maybe I'll take it tomorrow. Or I can taste it, you know, yeah. what he has given us. And the other thing is, Tarun, what you said, this visa, no, this lifelong visa, which we got, like, we know, we know the address, we know our home, we know our job there, you know, we know our uniform, like we have every, every detail is given to us, no, we just have to apply it. The Gurudev always calls it applied science. Yeah. Sometimes, you know, it is, it's very easy to say, but sometimes, you know, we are, like Gurudev is saying, I, for me, I, we play too much ping pong, you know, we play too much with the material and energy, but when, when you play too much with the material energy, you lose, you lose the perception of the importance of the visa. So that is the danger. That is the danger. If we lose that, we, we occupy ourselves too much with the material energy, we lose the focus on the visa, you know. So that is the that is the point. We play too much. We look at the rasagula and we think, yeah, rasagula is fine. I will eat the hanuta first, you know. <laughs> <laughs> that is the difference. So good. If I have the visa, but who will give me the entry stamp? <laughs> who will stamp us? Who will mark us? Actually. Sadhana Bhakti in also in Raga Bhakti. One is a Bhadi Bhakti Sadhana and one is a Raga Bhakti Sadhana. So our meditation is also Sadhana. Mm. Our Smaran is also Sadhana. Our Dhruva Smriti is also Sadhana. <sighs> it's also Sadhana. Thinking always, dreaming also is a Sadhana. Looking is also Sadhana. Everything will be in Sadhana. Sadhana Bhakti. This is sa Raga Bhakti, Sadhana Bhakti. In Raga Bhakti, there is a Sadhana. Mm. My mind where goes, that is my sadhana. Yes. And how to mind to keep in this sadhana, that is the sadhana bhakti. That is the point. When Raga Bhakti, when we do the sadhana, when we, my, my mind is totally one pointedness to summary, and I'm only thinking that, not 
टचिंग मेटेरियल एनर्जी टू मी दैट इज अस्मरण अस्मरण मीन्स नॉर्मल थिंकिंग we have to watch for to our normal thinking what my mind is doing with me that is sadhana where mind is going it should go that way then i will achieve this is not a sadhana i can dream what i will dream where is mind is going then how it will be 24/7 is all mind where the mind goes i am in that sadhana baba is clearly explained is a mental religion what is why mental religion i was very doubtful when i listen mental religion yes is a mental religion what is <laughs> accident can come come to me yes where is mind going where is the attachment of my mind that is my sadhana check this then sir is what you say this first mind is going what is that smaran what you thinking what is mind is happening how much time i give for that where i am putting my mind and then what i dharan what i cover myself i think that right or not so would it be by think about my name my form my clothes that i dharan i wear it <laughs> that i think mm. that is that is what you say our no that is my sadhan bhakti yeah. sadhana is of better religion my dear mind has to be bringing a one point at me dhyan dhyan dharan dhruva smriti one point at me. dhyan dhyan dhruva smriti to start from asmaran what is happening in my mind what i am moving which place in which consciousness radhe radhe om ka gurudev gana ask gurudev Yeah. Gurudev, I am so thankful that that you made this point, this very wonderful point, because many many years, everyone. This was the first thing I learned when I met Baba that Raganuka Bhakti. Some many people say that Raganuka Bhakti starts at Baba Bhakti, but this is like you said, very wrong. Raganuka Bhakti and Vaidhi Bhakti all both start with Sadhana Bhakti. So Raganuga Bhakti has Sadhana Bhakti and Vaidhi Bhakti has Sadhana Bhakti. But the moment you decide 
to, to attain Radha and Krishna and Vrindavan. At that moment, Rupa Goswami is saying, you perform Raga Nuga Sadhana Bhakti. Thank you so much. One is Vaidhi Bhakti, one is, Vaidhi Bhakti. One is yes. Sadhana Bhakti. Vaidhi Bhakti is different. Yes. Sadhana Bhakti, I am talking what Baba says. Yes. Baba is telling that Sadhana Bhakti is our mental religion. Yes. Only we have to balance our mind. Where is going? Asmaran, then Dhyan. Careful in Dhyan. Dharan. I don't remember this very nicely he explained. Varan, Varan, I Varan it, then I will be different Dhyan. My Sarup Varan, if I am there, my Dhyan is different. Dhruva Smriti is also different. And then it goes up to Samadhi. That Samadhi stage is very rag and rag. But but I say you Even Rasik also, they say they are sadhak. But when sadhak, they are doing um, uh, uh, Vedi sadhana, no, sadhana. This sadhana is balancing their smaran to be 24 7, even to bring in the dream. Thank you. Hi, if you allow me, Gopinath, do you want to add something? Huh? You want to add something? No, no. <laughs> I'm full. <laughs> You're full. So we have a few minutes left and I want to allow uh, ask your permission to go into the Leela Smaran of this verse also with Tulasi Manjari. It is the last part of the purport and it's so full of nectar, I cannot explain it to you. If you allow me, I will read it. Tulasi has finished combing Radhika's hair and sits down on her knees behind her now to braid it with loving expertise. She sits behind Swamini, but she strongly desires to see her beautiful face. That's why she calls her Goshtendra Shunudaiti. O oh, beloved of the Prince of Braj. This address is full of secrets. How many emotions can be known through this address? Swamini is Krishna's Bhava Moi, full of love for him. And the Kinkaris? Aradhika's Bhava Mai, Swamini's Bhava Mai, full of love for her. Srimati loves Sri Krishna, and the maidservants love Srimati. To Lassi maddens Swamini by awakening the remembrance 
in her of one of her sweet sports with Mohan. The word Gushtendra Sunudaiti can mean you are the beloved of the Prince of Braj or the Prince of Braj is your beloved. And this shows their mutual love. Tulasi says, at the end of your pastimes in the Kunj, Shyam is making your braid with his own hands. And you also put his crown on. Or sometimes, out of deep love, you may reverse roles and Shyam may think himself to be you. And you think of yourself as him. And then he will put his crown on your head. And you will lovingly braid his hair. Can I also serve you so expertly and lovingly as Shyam does? I am your poor, unqualified maidservant. Be so merciful to give me that service. That is my desire. When Swamini hears herself being called the beloved of the Prince of Braj, she is overwhelmed and thinks that it is Shyam who makes her braid instead of Tulasi Manjari. She keeps her eyes half closed while she relishes that thought and feeling like a bee falling into the nectar of a blue lotus flower. Blessed is Tulasi. Blessed is her service. With one address, she manages to crystallize the lila ras and submerge Swamini in relishing that savor. The practicing devotee should try to remember these sweet pastimes every day. When the Swarup Avesh remains, it means it's die. Maya has no chance to contaminate the devotee's mind. All of Maya's disturbances are caused by bodily consciousness. Narmada, the florist's daughter, makes beautiful small garlands with fragrant juti and kameli flowers for Tulasi to bake a braid with. with a, what a beautiful handicraft! Just as Tulasi stretches out her hand to do the work, the spiritual vision disappears and she cries and laments out of disappointment. When can this fallen soul lovingly make your braid with small garlands that were strung by Narmada? So I always I just love this when Baba is making these beautiful pictures of the Leela, painting the Leela from his heart, from Raghunath Das Goswami's heart, for us to enter. And as, as you were mentioning many times, Gurudev, the first word or the first sentence of a verse is like a hint to go, you know, deeper. 
And what is the first sentence? O oh, beloved of the Prince of Braj. That sounds so ordinary, but it's one of the deepest things that Tulasi said to Swamini that overwhelmed her with her feelings of, you know, feeling togetherness with her beloved again. And the Kinkaris, like Baba explained, they love Shimati Radhika so much that they have this intention. They do it with their love that they, they say this to Swamini. You are the beloved of the Prince of Braj. And this is not just like a nice compliment. It is crystallizing the last meeting in her heart. And when she is feeling that, then she becomes so happy. She becomes so deeply touched and in meditation. And she will remember all the pastimes again. And that is actually the service that a maidservant does. She will say things and do things in such a way that Swamini is reminded of Shyam, of her Mohan. Because the maidservant's not only speaking in this way, O oh, beloved of the Br Prince of Braj, but she's also, you know, touching her, making her braid in such a way that Swamini, at one point, she is so much absorbed in her samadhi and in her meeting. She will, for her, it is, it is her beloved who is braiding her hair now. And these are the most beautiful emotions that the Kinkari's service is to arise them in Swamini and she is fulfilled by that when she can make Swamini happy like that and remind her of, of her Mohan. And do you remember what the beloved Prince of Braj, how he was braiding your hair? <coughs> oh, beloved of the Prince of Braj, when will this person, after washing your lotus feet, lovingly braid your hair with the beautiful fine garlands made by the florist girl? Narmada. <laughs> <laughs> 